Welcome back to the programme. Let's get a reminder now of our top story on Euronews this hour. Peace talks between Ukraine and Russian officials are taking place on the Belarusian border. Kiev had asked for a ceasefire and a Russian troop withdrawal before the meeting and says it has low expectations of a diplomatic breakthrough to end the war, which is now in its fifth day. This is the other side of what is happening in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city where fighting between Russian and Ukrainian forces continued on Sunday. Small patients in the children's hospital were forced to move to a bomb shelter. There, medical staff are caring for children with the most basic means. Here is a mattress. You can sleep here, they tell one child. I don't want to, he replies. We live here now. This is our house. Look, here is a kettle, his mother explains. Kharkiv is a city of 1.4 million inhabitants in eastern Ukraine, very close to the Russian border. Some call it the capital of Russian-speaking Ukraine. But at the moment, it is essentially a city under siege. Well, the sirens have just uh, gone off, so as required, I'll go to the shelter. Well, there is nobody here, obviously. Uh, the alert didn't really worry anyone at the hotel I'm staying in, of which this is the shelter, whether the, the journalist staying here or the staff, and actually the uh, the staff today have told me that if they had to come down to the shelter every time there was an alert, uh, they would be spending their, their time here and they have work to do. So they don't, they don't bother anymore unless, you know, something really serious happens and it hasn't so far. Um, I spoke to two, uh, two young men working at the reception. One of them was 18 years old. Uh, so he didn't really believe that the Russian troops would eventually invade uh, the Ukrainian capital. Um, however, if it did happen, he said he would be uh, ready to take up arms. He, he didn't want to have to kill anybody and he didn't look like uh, he would uh, kill anyone at all, but um, he, he wanted to defend his troops if necessary. And actually, he said the whole population would do the same. And a few days ago, uh, the government had organized the distribution of small weapons to civilians, and the operation was so successful that there are no weapons left. Anyway, um, the fact that this shelter is empty tonight is a good sign. Things have been um, calm today in Kyiv. Uh, the problem is nobody knows how long that can last. I'm Valerie Goya in Kyiv for Euronews. Europe is witnessing what could become the largest humanitarian crisis on the continent in many years. That was the warning from the European Commission as thousands flee the fighting in Ukraine. More than 360,000 have already left the country. 200,000 of them have headed across Poland's border. But the EU must brace itself for far more. As for humanitarian situation overall, currently expected number of displaced Ukrainians is over 7 million people. And in the worst case scenario, if this war of aggression continues, we will find they will find themselves in urgent need of humanitarian assistance. As a result, the European Commission has strongly advised member states to cut red tape for Ukrainian citizens fleeing from the war to safety. In fact, all 27 nations in the bloc have decided to accept Ukrainian refugees without asylum applications. The decision was agreed unanimously following a meeting of its interior ministers. The open door style policy will remain in place for up to three years. The EU is also going to make funds available to support the countries on the front line of the refugee crisis. Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and Romania are also opening their borders to let in those trying to escape the fighting. Is anyone 
anybody helping me at the airport? Is it Chava? Yes, the two cases and the children. Can you take them? Only after crossing the borders and leaving Ukraine behind them that refugees can rest for a while. Sometimes their relatives and friends greet them in the north of Romania, while hundreds of volunteers offer foods and drinks. Vasily is a refugee with double citizenship. He left Ukraine to Germany to put his relatives into safe place, but he decided to return home and resist. My wife is waiting for me. I've been gone for three days and she's waiting, calling me many times. Where are you? Where are you? She's waiting back home for me. With their wives and children fleeing the country, most Ukrainian men are forced to stay and survive the Russian invasion. Few consider themselves lucky to own a Romanian citizenship. Everywhere is dangerous. Two or three rockets can come in one night and small children die. My youngest is six years old and I cannot hide him. And I have seven children. From morning uh, we have heard uh, some explosions and um, after that we thought that uh, something bad is going to happen and uh, we left, uh, left here. We are from Georgia and now we will we'll transfer to Georgia somehow, <laughs> I don't know. Most of the refugees are traveling to West in countries like Poland, Germany or Italy. Others choose free local accommodation, such as hotels or local homes. We have uh, sandwich, fruits, water, milk, chicken. Is it enough for the refugees? Uh, until now it's enough for, for everybody. The distance between the Ukraine-Romania border and Kiev is only 500 kilometers. Claudio Popa, Euronews Romania. The defiant mayor of Kyiv and former boxing world champion Vitaly Klitschko has taken up arms in a last bid to protect his city against a Russian takeover. Uh, we can talk about Russian, Russian position right now. This is uh, the uh, war. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, uh, the many people died, it's many civilian people died. Uh, it's, uh, it's horrible, especially for civilian uh, women, children, our soldier. Every Ukrainian support the decision to be the part of European family is a main priority for us. And uh, Putin not agree with that. Uh, we don't want to live uh, in Russia empire. Klitschko believes the Ukrainians will fight until the end. And uh, big demoralization by Russian forces, by Russian soldiers, because they understand, they, they feel in our country very uncomfortable, because every Ukrainian had Russians, headed Russians. And the message, go back to home from our country, away. Hundreds of people were spotted Some waiting support. to pick up weapons throughout Kyiv after authorities decided to distribute guns freely. That's it for now. Another reminder, of course, that we're here throughout the day bringing you the latest developments on Russia's war in Ukraine. Do stay with us and also check out our website, euronews.com.